Okay. So along the way, there are so many people that have sent me emails about being a nutritarian and how a nutritarian lifestyle has improved their and reverse their diseases. So today we're going to talk about Dr. Furman's Joel, Dr. Joel Furman's favorite recipes from this book, Eat to Live. And look at this. Look at how I marked it. Last night I made a recipe. I posted it on the link below, on the comments below. And I want you guys to guess which recipe it is. But send me a private message. The first one to guess what recipe that is will win one of Dr. Dolt Thurman's book, Eat to Live, Quick and Easy. Love, love, love this book. Okay, so I hope you got sharing and got that out of the way. So you've shared with your private page and or with all your, your favorite uh, um, groups that you belong to so that we can get started. So put your, fasten your seatbelt on because we're going to learn and grow with Dr. Joel Furman. Let's do it. The Lillian McDermott Show. We love, we fear, bridges we burn, we make mistakes, then we live and learn. When life gets tough, and it seems like your best ain't good enough. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who have been tuning in to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show uh, since 2011, or maybe you just started watching us yesterday on Facebook Live or wherever you stumbled upon us. Welcome back. But if this is the first time that you received a message that the show, you should watch the show slash classroom, because I'm dropping the radio show off of the name. I am just focusing on the learning and growing together. And if this is the first time that you have heard about the classroom, welcome. I've been waiting for you. Please know that this is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend and it is my commitment to provide alternative ways to heal and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility and truth a part of our everyday life and I hope you, my listening as well as my viewing friends will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams, the life that you were created to live, the best life ever. So here's the deal. In order for you to win today's book, because we are giving away Dr. Joel Furman's Eat to Live Quick and Easy. We're going to talk about his favorite recipes, and we're going to interweave some of the stories that I've been hearing. Dr. Joel Furman doesn't even know what these stories are, but we're going to be talking about those stories that the recipes that heal the body. Food can be a weapon of mass destruction, but it could also be a tool that can heal every cell in your body. So um, I'm asking you that if you want to get a free book of Dr. Furman's, Read to Live Quick and Easy, that you share the post, this, this, this broadcast, you need to share the broadcast. Also, if you're on YouTube, just know that you can always join us at Lillian's Radio Show on Facebook Live, and you need to subscribe if you want to get notifications. So be the 10th message. So if you are watching on the Facebook live stream, be the 10th message. If you're, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcasts, let me know where you're listening from, and you will get the 10th caller will get a free cookbook. Okay, so. I am excited because 
Dr. Joe Furman has been on the show every month for since 2015. What a great friend of the show. And he comes with 30 years of plus experience. He has researched every diet that's out there and he has evidence. This is science-based evidence that a nutritarian lifestyle not only heals your body, but it also re reverses disease. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Dr. Joel Furman is back wow. once again to do just that. Welcome, Dr. Furman, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show Classroom. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Good to be here. And the doctor is in the classroom. Share a little bit about your passion, Dr. Furman, and why you are still just as passionate today, probably more passionate today than you were when you first started. What do you think? Well, I've always been excited by watching people reverse disease and get well. And, you know, I, I love doing what I do, but I particularly like caring for people who have been, who have been overweight or sickly of diabetes or psoriasis or lupus. I like, to, I like the fact that people who are needy and have medical problems come to me and I feel and the, my confidence and enthusiasm and gives them hope and let them know that they don't have to be sick the rest of their life. And then watching their miraculous transformation take place mm -hmm. so they gain their health back is always a thrill. And that's why it became, that's why I'm doing this. You know? Yeah. You've come a long way from um, locking people in your, uh, in, in your basement. Now you have a beautiful center, a retreat center that people can go to the eat to live Retreat Center in California. Would you like to share a little bit about the Retreat Center before we start talking about all the recipes that you heal people with? Right, you're right. And, and you're right in, the, in that years ago, I had people in the, my basement of my house in New Jersey. I would have people living in my basement and then I'd have a, I had a guest house in town with, you know, and, and I've always had people, um, even before my, I remember before my daughter Carol was born, before, when I only had two kids and not four kids, all their rooms had patients in them. <laughs> People came from all over the world and stayed and lived in my house. When my little girls were little babies, they would be in the bed with the, with the guests, with the patients, you know, playing with them in bed. And you know, they would develop relationships. My, my, my girls, when they were little, you know, babies would develop relationships with the people who were living in our house who were there to get wealth. But, you know, it was funny. But yes, now I have a... Um, an incredible, beautiful retreat in, in northern, north of San Diego, where people do come from all over the world. I just had recently had people from Australia, it's a couple from Australia come and, and, but, and it's, it's always exciting. But now I have a beautiful facility with the best food in the world, with best soil, and we grow a lot of our own food. And I have a 50 fruit tree, exotic fruit tree orchard. I'm put, just finished putting in the sand volleyball court and the, putting a disc um, golf course on the premises and it's just exquisite but but the base but the chefs are and the main you know I, I make great recipes and great food for all these years but the chefs I have working there actually make them in our every like plate they serve as an artistic masterpiece you gotta like take photos of it they like drizzle and they put the things looks beautiful you should come people should come there just for the food alone but they come there because usually they're overweight and sickly and need to get reverse heart disease, reverse diabetes, get rid of psoriasis, you know, recover from asthma, rheumatoid arthritis. They get the, you know, we're getting their people and keeping them a longer time because it takes time for people to get rid of food addiction. And if they, they go to a place for a week or two, they invariably, I could say 80% of the time, they don't stick with the program the rest of their life. When they come to our retreat, and they stay there four to 12 weeks. And I encourage people to stay two or three months or even longer because they do have these triggers that drag them into going off their diet. And so many people are overweight and have diseases. They're, they're addicted to the food, but they stay there and they really no longer prefer to eat the old way. And they really learn how to make the food taste the new way, but they, know, but they actually re retrain their taste buds and retrain their food preferences. So they prefer eating this way and then they can stick to this way for the rest of their lives. Yes, for yes. Example, Nikki came into our facility, um, stayed there for five weeks and lost 50 pounds. And then um, when she left, she lost 200 pounds the year she left. After yo-yo dieting her whole life, she was over, she was over 400 pounds. Wow. So she lost 250 pounds that in, in like 14 months, you know, two months, lost the 50. So it's the, the, the real test of this is the, the year they're out of the, if they gain any weight back, if they keep losing, the point is when, once she's released, we have psych, you know, we have a, 
a therapist, psychotherapist there that specialize in food addiction. You know, so we have the whole team of nurses, psychotherapists, my care, counselors, and exercise trainers, the whole, but, you know, it just works. Everything meshes nicely so people really can conquer their, their demons, their food See, demons, so to speak. Yes, and, and you see, people like Nikki need to be like the equivalent, not the person, but the equivalent of what they did with Jared. You know, Jared from the subway who ate his way, lost his way through that, and they made such a big deal about that. That wasn't a, the best way or the optimal way to release weight, but Nikki is doing it right. 200 pounds, that is amazing. There should be a commercial. There should be a commercial about her. I, that, well, I, on my website, doctorfirm.com, you hit retreats. I have a little video, and I have Nikki in the video in her own words telling her story. Well, I'm going to mm -hmm. check her out. Yes, you could check it out. But you fun. know, maybe we can have her on a Thriving Thursday on the classroom where she can share her story as well. She would love to do that. She's That's so awesome. excited about doing that. She would love to do that. Okay, so let's... let's... Who, so many people I've seen who've recovered their health and who've gotten their health back just are excited to share what they've experienced, you know. Why don't we do that? Every time you come on, maybe we can bring someone who oh, has great. really um, worked the program and is um, an example, a living example of what could happen. So um, I want to take a little pause here because I ran into uh, a young lady. Her name is Linda. I think she's in the audience. I don't know if you, whoever, for those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, share where you're listening from because I know we have listeners from all over the world. And if, uh, Linda, if you are there, just you could either send me a, a private message or whatever. But um, Linda's father has stage four kidney disease. And as you know, the regular community or allopathic community might say that, you know, just get yourself ready, get your affairs in order. Um, apparently, it was brought by hepatitis C, had stage kidney four, and is, uh, has um, a condition called thalassemia. 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 But they changed his diet. This young lady changed her diet and uh, his, his, her father's diet. And now he's been going back and learning that his kidney functions are improving 2 to 3%. They want to know uh, when changing this nutritarian lifestyle and all of a sudden they're seeing a reversal. The doctor is amazed that there's been some improvement. She wanted to ask you, um, what else can her dad do to keep this moving towards improvement that they're just amazed about? Right. Well, you know, I, I don't really know the whole case or what, what yeah, is, sure. what's wrong with him or anything. So, uh, but, but basically being on a nutritarian diet with all these nutrients, with being actually low in protein, the, the protein it pushes too much pressure on the kidney. So it's really the, the combination of a low protein version of a nutritarian diet is usually, but I, I don't know his numbers and actually the, you know, the data on the case. So okay. Sometimes we have to make adjustments for the individual based on his potassium level and his albumin. And, and so it's, um, she could also um, directly ask me questions to the Ask the Doctor forum at drfirman.com where I can get, give more specific answers about, um, you know, no, learn more about his, her father's condition. Uh, she did say that they are aware that um, of the potassium and phosphorus, and it's in, there are times where uh, he was taking the pro, pro rit shot? Pro crit? Pro crit shot. Okay, my, my C kind of like that. It's but. erythropoietin. It's a shot that makes the kidney produce, because you produce red blood cells. Um, the kidney produces erythropoietin, which, which then um, encourages the production of red blood cells by the bone marrow. So the kidney's bad, you're not making erythropoietin. So it's a procrit is the shot that makes the kidney do that. So, and also sometimes we have designed, we design diets that are lower in potassium than our normal nutritarian diet for people with advanced kidney disease. So we might have to make some modifications to the diet. That's why we have to know his levels. Sometimes okay. they have potassium binders and the they can take fibers that bind potassium and suck it out of the body because the kidney doesn't excrete potassium well. So, okay. but, but in any case, um, you know, with both, there, there's always hope because there's always some cells that are dead and some cells that are hibernating or injured and not working. And sometimes you can improve things with, with, with excellent nutrition. 
Very good. And that's what they're doing. And um, so let, let's, I want to go back because, I mean, I just thought that, you know, stage four kidney disease uh, and all, all of a sudden changing to a nutritarian lifestyle, this really works. Food is our medicine. Hippocrates said it best. And so um, Dr. Foreman has not only created wonderful medicine, but it's really tasty. So I have a picture on the comment section that I took last night, and the recipe is in the Eat to Live cookbook. And uh, so I want you to guess the first person who gets it correctly will win the book. And so you can, you can guess underneath, uh, underneath it, and I will um, pick the winner, the first one to guess the name of the recipe correctly. I don't know, Dr. Furman, can you go on to it? Could you see the picture that I made? You probably know. I'll show it to you in a little bit. No. But um, I have it here on my camera because I was so excited. I said, I am going to make a recipe from the cookbook, and I am going to post it on Facebook Live. And for those of you who are on Facebook Live right now, here's the picture. Um, if this is the picture. Make a comment. Uh, this is my recipe. This is Dr. Joel Furman's recipe that I made last night, and that's what we had for dinner, and it was delicious. Okay, Dr. Furman, so what are your favorite recipes that you would like to start with today that is in the cookbook? Um, you, we could either, because there are two. The first book that Dr. Furman ever published was Eat to Live. And so we're going to be talking from that book as well as the quick and easy. And let me tell you, the recipe that I just uh, showed you on the screen was very easy to make, very easy and very quick. Okay, Dr. Furman, now you're on. Tell us what's your favorite recipe. And I want to hear your, on Facebook Live, I want you to tell me what's your favorite recipe. So we have people listening from Missouri and Texas. I know that we have uh, people from England. And who else? Where else? Okay, so let's go ahead, Dr. Furman. Which ones are your favorite recipes? Well, you know, I, I was just skimming and noticed that there's a, a pita pocket that uses a, a tomato paste or tomato sauce mash with some almond butter to make it really quick. And I'm just saying I use that all the time. Even for a salad dressing, to make a quick salad dressing is to take a low salt tomato sauce with tomato paste. Or I can take sun-dried tomatoes that have been soaked, you know, take those non no salt no oil just just plain organic sun-dried tomatoes and i'll soak them overnight in a little bit of water to soften them and i'll blend them with tomato paste to make to bring out or tomato sauce or tomato paste but sometimes i'll just take tomato sauce and i'll put it on the on a little pot on a very very low flame and cook the tomato sauce slowly to make the water go out, to concentrate the flavor, mm. to make it into tomato paste. So we're talking about giving that very concentrated tomato flavor by slow cooking tomato sauce, making your own tomato sauce from the garden tomatoes, and slow cooking it for eight hours with garlic and onion and mushroom in there and, and basil and some basil and some bay leaves. It's just incredible. So I make this thick tomato sauce, or well, it could be a commercial one, but I usually I'll be soaking dried tomatoes and making it thicker using tomato paste or cooking a little bit. Then I just mash in, because I have it saved in my refri refrigerator, because tomato, because the acidity doesn't go bad in the refrigerator. You could stay there for, you know, weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'll just take a little almond butter, mash in with a fork, and I can use some fig vinegar or some balsamic vinegar with a little bit of currants in there, or, you know, just a little bit of sweetener in there, like a few currants if I want to make it chunky, or otherwise I'll put a little bit of a... What you know, about a module date? What about a module date, Dr. Furman? Well, yeah, but a module date I'll have to put in the blender and dirty up a blender. And have oh, to I see. Blender. If I use... Uh, right, I can use a... I've tried to soak a medjool date and mash it with a fork yes. to make it like a medjool paste and mix it in, but I'm trying to do this quick without a blender. So I'm just taking a little tomato sauce, mash it down, put it with a fork, put a little balsamic vinegar in, put a few currants in there, and I can paste, post that on a toasted um, Ezekiel wrap or on, on a pita pocket and put my avocado, red onion, tomato, sprouts, you know, greens in there, close it up with silver foil, and I'm off to the plane or, I'm, you know, I'm off on the road. You know, so I use that, so I can use it as a salad dressing, use it as a wrap for tomatoes. And one thing we do is I always roast a lot of garlic. So I'll take the whole garlic, when I like to roast it with the paper intact, just bake them in the oven, 300 degrees for 20 minutes, so the paper gets soft, and then save a lot of cooked roasted garlic and then mash the garlic with some hemp seeds and cashews and lemon juice and nutritional yeast. Or, so, and we'll, you know, so I'm making the garlic into a, a, what I call a garlic nutter. 
Now I can take that garlic nutter and put a little mustard in it, or I can put a little ba um, um, basil in it to make a pesto. And I'll put that on a pita or a pocket and put that with it. And I like to use that with, with um, roasted portobellos or roasted mushrooms. So I like to, you know, I'll saute mushrooms in water and put them and then put a, you know, and there's a lot of great sauces for roasting mushrooms, like, like the Thai curry sauce. Yes. Sometimes I, I like to put a little bit of peanut butter in the Thai curry. So just a touch of peanut butter. So make the Thai curry, so, you know, cumin and turmeric and lemongrass or lemongrass paste and put a date in there in the blender and just put a little and, um, and then just put a little bit of um, maybe a little soy milk to blend it. And then just put a little bit of this, a uh, little bit of peanut butter in so it's a peanut Thai flavor, you know, and toss a bunch of vegetables in that. So the quick and easy is you just take some mixed vegetables, bok choy, cabbage, mushrooms, snow pea pods, you know, whatever you have, toss it in, the, in, a, in a wok and cook it with, water, with a quarter cup of water for six minutes. While it's tossing that in the wok for six minutes, make a sauce. A lot of great sauces in this book. We have a peanut curry sauce here. Yes. We have a... We have a lot of different sauces to make, put on your vegetables and those vegetables. And then you put this, so you walk it for six minutes in water, which is the right amount of time because you don't lose the myrosinase activity of the green vegetables that the, that, see the myrosinase enzyme forms the anti-cancer ITCs, the isothiocytes. When you, when you walk it just for six minutes, you didn't destroy all the enzymes and it still tastes cooked. So it's really good. Then you put the, then you, shut the flame off, put the sauce in it, cover it, mix it around a little bit, let it sit for two minutes longer, and you've got a great dish that yeah. you made. The whole, the whole dinner practically was made in, in 10 minutes. And then you make a, an ice cream. There's all these great ice cream desserts in this book too. Yes. You know, and one of my favorite simple ice creams is the vanilla and ice cream. It's just a frozen banana, a few macadamia nuts, and real vanilla bean powder. And the secret ingredient is the real vanilla bean powder. You've got to put that in your vanilla ice cream. It's just, it's the most delicious vanilla ice cream that beats any, any mainstream, chemicalized, overly sugared junk food ice cream just made with these three ingredients. But then we put mango ice cream, you know, mango in the frozen mango with a little macadamia nuts, the same basic thing, or yeah. strawberry, pineapple, you know, a piece of dried pineapple with a box of frozen strawberries, a squeeze of lemon. So we have, you know, fudgesicle pops by using cocoa powder or chocolate cocoa powder in with the, with the nuts and the, a little bit of, um, you know, with the fruit, like the banana, the nuts, the cocoa powder, whatever it is, and put it into fudgesicle pops. Kids love these, these frozen yeah. desserts made with real fruit and nuts because the nut in the fruit keeps it from coming like a rock, like a, it keeps it mush, um, give that fudgesicle a real ice cream feel without having to use junk food or, you Correct. know. Correct, correct. There's so many great, so many great tasting foods that people love. And that's what I love, love to do is make people just marvel at how, how gourmet and delicious this tastes as they're getting their health back and losing weight, you yeah. know. Yes. And so I just wanted to say that uh, Blanca says that she loves your banana oatmeal cookies and her grandson loves them too. And my grandson's going to be visiting this ne um, next week. He'll be with me the entire, uh, to, with us the entire week. And I plan on give, making him a little nutritarian. He already is when he comes over. So he's going to be a little nutritarian. And so Leonard is listening from Canada, Newfoundland. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. And we have a listener from Jordan. Uh, his name is um, Ibrahim. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're listening today uh, with Dr. Furman. And Victoria, this is the first time she meets you. And so she's really excited about listening and learning more. This is the missing link. You know, miss, but a lot of people are like going to the gym or they think that starving themselves is good. Or maybe, you know, maybe somebody's joining today that has never heard of a G-bomb. Let's talk about your G-bombs, Dr. Furman, and why that's a really good acronym to start our day with, or start our, our shifting mentality that we never have to really count a calorie because if we stick to what you prescribe, then we will have a micro and macronutrient rich diet. So if you'd like to share about that, the G-bombs. Right. Well, we want the diet to be rich in micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. And what I'm saying is that the richer, the more micronutrient and phytochemical richness, the less you desire to overeat calories. Calories can also be called macronutrients because macronutrients are fat, carbohydrate, and protein. Mm -hmm. And we know that the higher your micronutrient per macronutrient ratio of your diet, the more nutrients per calorie, the longer you live. So that's the secret to long life and aging slower 
is having a diet with a high micronutrient to macronutrient ratio or a high nutrient per calorie, a high nutrient um, bang per caloric buck. We want to get as much nutrients as we can. And as we get more nutrients per calorie, it suppresses the appetite naturally. You don't feel like overeating anymore. You're satisfied with less. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point is to be satisfied with less calories. You save money on food and you save your life in the process because excess calories kill people and fat on the body causes cancer and heart disease and dementia. Fat is deadly. To be overweight is committing suicide with food because fat cells secrete leukotrienes and lipokines and all types of dangerous inflammatory modulators that raise estrogen and cause and other danger and angiogenesis promoters. In other words, fat cells shorten your lifespan. We don't want to diet. We don't want to even fast to lose weight. You don't want to starve yourself to lose weight because you, that's, that slows your metabolic rate too much and it makes you regain weight and people yo-yo the weight the rest of their life. And it's not the way to good health. They have to learn how to eat in a way so they lose a pound every three days or a kilogram a week. You follow a program, you eat this high G-bomb diet and you lose a kilogram a week slow and you keep losing that till it's off. And the G-bombs are the foods with the most power to protect cancer and to melt away your fat. Mm -hmm. yes. And those G-bombs, G-B-O-M stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And us nutritarians eat a lot of greens. We try to eat beans and berries and mushrooms and seeds, these foods every day. I'm trying to cook with mushrooms in my soups and my stews. And we use cooked mushrooms and we're making bean dishes because beans are your most favorite carbohydrate source because on the hierarchical scale of quality, they have the most resistant starch and the most slowly digestible carbohydrates, they're low glycemic, and they have the most anti-cancer nutrients in them. They're shown to extend human lifespan and they help you melt away diabetes and they fill you up and make you satisfied. Mm -hmm. So we eat a lot of bean dishes in the, in the menus, a lot of green vegetables, both cooked and raw, and learning how to make delicious, healthy salad dressings is a must integral to this part of a nutritarian diet is you're using, you're not using commercial salad dressings. You know how to make salad dressings taste great that are made of healthy ingredients. So your salads become the main dish usually at lunch. Like our lunches are usually a salad with a bowl of vegetable bean soup and a piece of food for dessert or mm -hmm. something like that. So, yeah. so yeah, so the G bombs get people right in the way. They know that I, Oh, I'm eating berries. I'm eating low sugar fruits, you know, kumquats and passion fruit and blueberries and strawberries and, you know, things like that. And, Eat, eat more lotion, eat more of these high nutrient anti cancer fruits. And fruit is a um, fruit that diets without fruit have been shown to um, in, increase risk of early life death. In other words, we're seeing now from long term epidemiologic studies that keto diets, that people restricting fruit, restricting carbohydrates, are dying younger. And so it's really important that people eat a nutritarian diet because we check off every box that potentially enhances lifespan, slows aging, and protects your brain and your body as you age is checked off by a nutritarian diet. Almost every other approach misses a few boxes. The low fat vegans are you know, not giving, taking DHA for the brain, a lot of them come become dementia. The lack of fat from nuts and seeds in the diet increases risk of premature cardiovascular death and leads to more brain atrophy mm -hmm. and increased risk of um, um, early mortality. So we're talking here that you have the paleo and keto people eating, you know, the out, eating animal products. In other words, we're checking all the boxes to make sure that if the people are doing a so-called plant-based, either a totally vegan diet or one that's near vegan with a little bit of animal products, they make sure they make no mistakes, that they get their full micronutrient adequacy. In other words, not missing any nutrients that could have messed them up in, in later life. Yes. So this is a very comprehensive approach so people don't make mistakes because a little mistake here and there could be the problem that's cut, cutting short their lifespan. Yes, yes. And so I want to take a little break here because we're doing things a little different. As you notice, we're not taking breaks, commercial breaks. We're going solid. But I do need to thank my sponsors. And I want to encourage all of you, all of you who are watching today, either on Facebook Live or later on, will listen to us on podcasts or on YouTube to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. This is a classroom. This is the Lillian. It started off as a Lillian McDermott radio show, and it's still that. We've come from that to a classroom, and I hope that we're all learning and growing together. 
This is where you take 100% responsibility for your life. Go to whenyouneedafriend.com so that you're told. And I mean, people ask me, hey, can you please remind me when Dr. Firm is going to be on? No, I, that way I remind you is when you become a subscriber, you get a blog and it'll tell you everybody who's going to be on the show. It'll give you a link to their website. It will give you everything that you need to for the week so you can set reminders so no i don't send personal reminders but i do send once a week and then the show once you're a subscriber the podcast the audio podcast of the show will be sent to your email and if you want to watch us on youtube and you subscribe there then the video will be sent to you it all depends on what you want but while you're doing that while you're there click it. We're going to make it so easy. Talk about quick and easy. All you have to do is go to whenyouneedafriend.com and you click on the buttons to subscribe and follow. Right now you're watching us on uh, Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show. If you like and follow us, you'll get a notification every time there's a live show. I just love how easy things are. But here's the thing. We have sponsors like Liberty HealthShare, First Alternative Care, which uh, you need to learn about first alternative care. $35 a month uh, will take care of your entire household. And that is um, 24 seven unlimited. So if you have a question and Dr. Furman's not available, you have the telemedicine doctors that are there at your service 24 seven, that's 24, uh, $34 a month for the entire household. And that is also including dermatology and three hours a year of behavioral health science. They just want everybody to have a bridge. If you don't have insurance or if you have insurance, can't afford the copay, or if you just want to have somebody call somebody real quick. There's also Keep Me Safe Organics where everything is synthetic, non-synthetic, all organic, and will protect your body. So make sure you click on those icons, Liberty Health Share. I walked away from insurance a long time ago, and that is who that's how I've taken back my life. And of course, if you live in the Brevard County area, especially um, Merritt Island, go to uh, the pharmacy. Just love all the people that have come together. In the Jacksonville area, we have Dr. Grable. So all these people have come together to support the show. So make sure you support my sponsors the way that they have supported us. Now today we're giving the book by Dr. Joel Furman, Eat to Live Quick and Easy. A way that you can get a book is by uh, guessing what recipe I have. So go to my picture where the picture is of, and make a comment below wow. the picture. And whoever guesses it first will win a copy of this book. Also, the 10th caller or texter, 407-373-5959, will get you a copy of this book as well. Whether you're watching later on a YouTube or podcast, you're all, we're all included in this. Now we have Dr. Joe Furman. You can find Dr. Furman at drfurman.com. And if you have a question for Dr. Furman, you can go to ask Dr. Furman. And there's a fee for that, right, Dr. Furman? Yes, there's a monthly fee for me at that membership so they can ask me, myself, and my medical staff questions directly. That's and so what is so they just register for that and they have a direct link to your your staff and to yourself, right? That's correct. Okay, so I wanted to shift. There was a question you were talking about um, the keto and the paleo diets. Um, Beverly uh, asked a question on YouTube, and her question was about epilepsy. She says, I'm not sure if I should stop my meds. Does the diet reverse epilepsy? And I know that this is not a diagnosis. For those of you who are watching today, this is something that you need to be uh, you use mindfulness to decide on what you'd like to do. And there's always Dr. Furman who is available, whether it's Ask Dr. Furman or uh, in the retreat center as well. So can you share a little bit about epilepsy? Right. Epilepsy means she has a certain type of seizure disorder, mm -hmm. which could have many different causes, including scarring of the brain and other types of um, issues. We don't know what's causing the seizures mm -hmm. um, or what type of seizures she has. And in my years of practice, I have had people with childhood onset seizures that switched to a nutritarian diet and they went away and never had seizures again. Wow. They could have grown out of the seizures. I, I can't guarantee the diet did it, but I've had my success rate has been very strong. The nutritarian diet, there's a, a ketogenic diet where you restrict carbohydrates and you cause ketosis. 
can be used for some people that are medication resistant. Mm -hmm. Doctors are hesitant to use those ketogenic diets because they're long-term dangers. They increase risk of bone fractures, especially in growing children, increase risk of pneumonia, and increase risk of later life cancers. And we talked earlier how ketogenic diets in general are dangerous, though the ketogenic diets today, that are, you can make a more plant-based ketogenic diet, it's not as dangerous. But, even, but any diet that keeps you into ketosis long-term is not, is not safe for long-term health and survival. Yeah. But of course, in certain cases of, non, of, um, of epi seizure disorders or epilepsy that can't be controlled, they have to be considered. You know, so a nutritarian diet does not have that ability to, create, to, um, to stop that seizure that's drug resistant. But it can be used to improve a person's health on medications or to or improve a childhood onset seizure, get, well, um, get healthy enough to stop seizures. So it's a complicated, complicated issue. Yes. And so that, you know, everything with your, with advice of your doctor, find a doctor that understands a nutritarian lifestyle. If Dr. Furman is not accessible, isn't that cute? That's Dr. Furman's puppy. Oh, look at him. What's, what's the, what's your puppy's name? Oh, his name is Petey. Petey. Oh, is that a Maltese? It's a multi-poo. A multi-poo. I had a multi-poo. Uh, as well. So send Petey some love. Those of you who are watching, uh, I've seen some hearts once in a while. Send little Petey some love and thank Dr. Furman for sending us some love with his information. So I'm going to take some time here and read some of your questions. Sharon, thank you so much for, uh, she attended one of your immersion uh, groups and uh, eat to, she says, uh, I can't wait to cook with you at the Eat Well, Stay Well One Day Immersion in Columbia. Uh, is that the uh, Maryland? Is there? Is yeah, there, I, I thought my next- In September. In September, oh, and I have one coming up in New York City too. Okay, so yeah. New York City, for those of you who um, want to learn more, and Blanca I says- immersion, I have a one week immersion in New Jersey coming up in June, the first beginning of June. I have a one week immersion in California in mid July on the 19th of July at 1440 Multiversity. And then I have my, um, yeah, and then of course my retreats open all the time for people who come yeah. in from states. But I do have these, but she's talking about a one day event. Usually we refer that term immersion to when we're staying with people for like a week. You know what I mean? They're in there yeah. the whole week being immersed in this. That's yes. just a one day event, but it's going to be a good event. Very good. And Blanca says that her husband loves your two bean chili. I saw that in the quick and easy last night as I was picking my recipes. And so thank you so much, Blanca, for sharing. And Linda says um, she loves G-bombs. And yes, that is what dad and I are doing. So um, the, Linda is the one that was sharing about her father. Now, she also said that her mother has been on antibiotics for over a year. And she's also on a nutritarian life uh, diet but she has a rash all over her body. I think that that is a reaction of the antibiotic. What do you think, Dr. Furman? I'm not a doctor, but. I, I have a brother-in-law who's a doctor. <laughs> I play one on TV once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I slept at a Holiday Inn Express, so maybe I just got a little smarter. So go ahead, share a little bit about uh, the rash that could possibly, I think it could be from the antibiotic. That well, I don't want to comment on what her rash is due to, but being on antibiotics for a year is never an answer. And antibiotics cause cancer. So antibiotics are linked to bre increased risk of breast cancer. So it's particularly foolish to stay on antibiotics. And if she's staying in it and... But, know, the doctor, but these doctors are foolish. The doctors are prescribing this, Dr. Furman. And remember, um, remember when I said to you that we need to take a course on saying no to our doctors. We need to look at our doctors. And if our doctors don't exemplify what we want to look like as we get older or what we what we think we should look like then we should fire them right? i know what you're saying i know i understand what you're saying but you know what it is the whole basis they're looking for it's it's a curative mentality sometimes the treatment the the symptoms of the disease is the cure and what i'm saying right now is that the rash could be the body throwing out waste products to the skin and we're not and we're so the, the symptoms, the, the asthma, the headaches, the, 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 the acid coming up in the digestive tract. In other words, all these symptoms are the body removing toxins. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to rapidly get well. We're trying to establish the right environment for healing. So slowly the symptoms go away with time. You know, so by trying to suppress the symptoms, we just have the person become more chronically sick. 
Yes. So people need to get, and there's almost nowhere they can get this kind of care is the problem. They can go to doctors, but doctors are always looking to, when they can't diagnose something clearly, it's not a clear cut infection. They don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's they have no tools to get people better except drugs. So how do they help people when the problem is not a drug deficiency or not an infection? So it's they're really the doctors, their hands are tied. They just don't have the tools to get people well. The tools to get people, you know, luckily, um, uh, you know, that's the exciting part of having the tools is the right, is nutritional excellence and sometimes letting the body do its thing naturally. You know what I mean? That, and just establishing the optimal environment for healing enables the body to get well on its own. So there's a lot more trust in the body's miraculous healing powers once we put together the perfect environment and the perfect nutritional program for healing and let the body just do its thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So Dr. Furman, a question from Sharon. She wants to know your favorite way to cook broccoli. Well, my favorite way to cook broccoli is, you know, and to cook vegetables like that is in a wok. So just to put a quarter cup of water in the wok and toss it around with a timer on. The major mistake is not using your phone or a timer to, for six to eight minutes and not cooking it more than six to eight minutes. So get the, that quarter cup of water boiling and then throw it in there and toss it around. You can blanch broccoli. You can drop it in water for two minutes. You can steam it for eight minutes. But, it, but, it but I like it walked better. You know, the, the inside stays a little firmer and, and you keep more nutrients. The outside, you get that combination, then you could add a sauce to it. So I'm saying cut it in small pieces, you know, chop it up small. I mix it with some Savoy or Chinese cabbage, snow pea pods, chopped onion, and mushrooms, particularly shiitake. A mixture of usually shiitake mushroom and random regular mushroom. And then I walk it in there and that's how I usually make it with a sauce and put a sauce on it. You make everything sound so wonderful. Okay, Dr. Furman. So Martha wants to know about tinnitus and ringing in the ear. Um, can a nutritarian lifestyle also help with that? In most cases, but we don't know what the cause of her tinnitus is. Um, so there are some times it can be caused by an acoustic neuroma or debris in the inner ear, or, you know, so there's a lot of nerve damage incurring in, into the or chronic, you know, noise damage. So nevertheless, um, this may be able to help her with time, but that's going to take some, but you know, what we're doing is we're making the whole body be in excellent health. You know, Matt, we're flooding the body with nutrients and we're even in the early stages of these disease reversal, we're giving people fresh vegetable juice to take to maximize the level of, of nutrients in the body quicker by drinking an extra glass of vegetable juice a day that has like, you know, greens, green juicing with some carrot and beet, you know, with some celery and, you know, so a glass of one third, one third, one third, one third cruciferous, one third carrot beet, and one third, of course, something more benign like lettuce or celery. So we make these juices to increase the levels of nutrients quicker. And so we were establishing optimal health and the body's doing the healing itself. But there are some is diseases or issues where we, where there's nerve damage or some pressure on a nerve or some other issues where we have to result to more medical technology and medical diagnostic techniques to find out what the cause is before yes. we're just finally treating with nutrition. No. Yes, yes. Okay, so as I'm scrolling down, Dr. Furman, I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to get, we have like 18 questions, we have 18 comments and I'm, I'm trying to focus on you and it's really difficult to go back and forth. So I misunderstood the rash, the rash is on the person's skin. So Linda's saying that the infection just won't go away, that there's a rash on her mother's skin. And so they're giving her antibiotics for that. So if there is a rash on somebody's skin, you're saying that that could be the, the body detoxifying? Yeah, that was, we understood it was a rash on her skin. Where else would a rash be other than the skin? No, no. Um, I said that I thought that it was a reaction to the antibiotic. No, I never saying, said, yeah, I'm not no, saying no, the I did, I did. I'm just saying taking an antibiotic is the wrong approach. Yes. If, took, if she took an antibiotic, as it was a, if they thought it was a bacterial infection, like a cellulitis, then it would go away or improve within a few days of taking the antibiotic. Correct. She should be on antibiotics long term. If she's on antibiotics long term, there's something they're doing wrong. And antibiotics long term is dangerous. So whether it's, I'm not necessarily saying the rash is caused by the antibiotic, but I'm saying an antibiotic is never, they should never, ever, ever be on an antibiotic that means because that's very dangerous yeah. and very foolish and that's malpractice. Yes. And so to clear the skin some more, I was the one that said that I thought that it was a, a reaction of the antibiotic, but what she is saying is that the rash was there before the antibiotic. So any, any tips to clear skin from rashes, just allow it to just clear, or could that be a deficiency? I know that 
you don't and have I enough information. You can't answer that because it could be yeah. a fungal infection. It could be a million different reasons why she has the rash. And so it could be a fungal infection and she's taking out it. You know, so it could be, could be other, other things, but it can be um, retention of toxic waste products that's causing a nummular type eczema rat, rash that an antibiotic is not, is just going to continue to contribute to and make worse. Yes. Okay. So um, Julie wants to know your suggestion to boost B12. There's no such thing as boosting B12. If you're B12, okay. if you take enough B12, so you're not deficient. Okay. So, so how the, do you do that? The amount of B12 you take, and almost all types of B12 are adequate. If your B12 is deficient, and the way you know if, if you need more B12, then your MMA would be elevated. The methylmalonic acid test would be elevated. If the methylmalonic acid test is not elevated, then she doesn't need to boost her B12. Then she's just getting phony and false um, advice that's not going to benefit her. Mm -hmm. So if, if that was elevated, then she should ratchet up her B12 so that was in the normal range. So usually we want people on vegan diets to be taking over, a, over 50 micrograms of B12 a day because their needs are increased. And, once, and some people, because of pernicious anemia or lack of intrinsic factor, may need up to 500 micrograms of B12 a day. But the type of B12 you take isn't, isn't that important. It's making sure you take your B12 if you're, if you're deficient in it. Okay, very good. And Tara, hello from Florida, she says. And then James said, I stopped drinking soda and went to unsweetened tea and water. Not only have I lost weight, but I am no longer in stage three kidney failure either. I do not buy or um, meet at Walmart anymore. <laughs> Which, which uh, I wasn't expecting that one. Um, oh, this is a pretty long one. And I get custom processed and off farm, no hormones, anti, oh, this is a long one here. Is there, if you would like to write me the, if there's a question, it's, if you can just, uh, let me see who this is from, James, if you can just, uh, if there's a question, just write the little question. Um, Blanca, doctor told her that my job my job is to treat the symptom, that's it. So for those of us that, what I'm saying, I, I think what you're saying, Dr. Furman, and maybe you can maybe enhance this, that if the body has a symptom, that's the way the body is saying there's something going on and that we should not mask the symptom, but we should embrace, look into how to, how to fill that deficiency in the body. Is that maybe... My well, I, I don't want to be absolute here. I mean, there are, we're saying very often that the symptoms of disease have a right directed activity. In other words, you have a headache, chronic headache. The headache means you're throwing out toxins out of your brain and we don't want to push them back in no. by taking steroids or escort or vanquish, right. or if you're a set of midrin, excedrin, we don't want to use drugs to push the poisons back in. We want them to come out and then you'll be well for the rest of your life. Okay. But a person could also get a headache from Lyme disease or a brain tumor. So I'm not being absolute and saying in all causes, it's always some, the body throwing out toxins. But the body, the body is telling you there's something wrong when there's a symptom and that we need to be our, you know, like a private investigator and discover what we can do. Like if I have a headache, chances are I have, I'm dehydrated or maybe I'm stressed. Um, and so I, I need to stop and kind of like evaluate and listen to my body speak to me. But then again, I eat well, and, and so whenever I have a symptom, I pay attention. Right, but it's a little, right, but we're saying something more than that. For example, yes. if you're an asthmatic and you can't breathe, you're taking steroids now. The steroids prevent the body from, re, from throwing, causing inflammation. But the inflammation is the way the body is removing the waste products. The asthma attack or the, uh, the inflammation in the lung is the body's efforts to remove the toxins. Mm -hmm. The taking the steroid inhaler is pushing the toxins back in. So now you have to be on steroids the rest of your life. Through a nutritarian diet, with the judicious use of some fasting, we can enable the body to control the inflammation and keep it lower and lower and lower so it goes away while we gradually cut back on the steroids. And, and then, then as we get to the point where they're on very low dosage and their asthma is getting better and better, then we can start fasting them a little bit to reduce the, so we can st stop the steroids completely. And we can allow, and now this person we allow the body to finish up the detox instead of continuing suppressing it their whole life. And by doing so, we enable them to never have to have asthma again the rest of their life. So I'm just giving an example with asthma, with loop, with some of these diseases, 
understanding that the body's trying to throw out waste products enables us to get to a complete cure because we can have the body finish its work and not be chronically, have chronic inflammation, whether it's the skin, whether it's the lung, whether it's your head, the more you suppress the symptoms, the more they're gonna become chronic and you have headaches all the time. Yeah. You allow the body to finish doing its work, they'll be gone forever, you know, yeah. especially establishing the high nutrient approach and giving the body all the nutrients it needs to maximally fuel the self repair mechanisms that's built into every cell. I, lo I love that. Um, I, I, one question that I want to address um, from someone who watched you before in one of the YouTube videos. His name, he is a avid um, uh, athlete and he is a nutritarian athlete in his, I think he's been 20 years. <clears throat> and, um, and he was saying that th the goal is to have low caloric intake, but someone who burns a lot of calories um, they work out six to eight hours, five to six hours a day with their um, athletic program, and obviously they are, you know, very good at what they do. Um, obviously, it sounds like a job for them. It, how do you suggest that the calorie the, that that breaks into the calorie intake, and how do they fuel their body on a nutritarian lifestyle? How, what do you suggest that they do? And snacks and and fueling for themselves? Well, they have to eat the, right, the amount of calories that's right for their particular level of athletic endeavor. Mm -hmm. you know, so when I, I used to be on the, a competitive athlete, a world-class athlete on the United States World Figure Skating Team, I was a fit pair skater with my sister, which competed internationally. And um, so I think I must have been eating over 3,500 calories a day, almost double what Americans eat. You know we had to eat a lot of food because I was training five hours or six hours a day. Um, but always staying slim and needing that calories with the caloric, with the high caloric burn. So you do have to, so sometimes you don't want to eat till you're so full. So then we did have to, do have to eat perhaps four meals a day or so space out the meals to four feedings a day. Um, but you know, you'd be surprised how efficient the body becomes mm -hmm. and you don't need to eat as many calories as you think you need. And we want the metabolic, the body to metabolize calories very efficiently and even slow its metabolism down a little bit to maintain calories. So when we're talking about lifespan here, mm -hmm. we're talking about mildly under eating so we can age slower and we can low, keep body fat low. Most people aren't professional athletes. And, keep it, and if you are a professional athlete, then you've got to do the best you can and eat super carefully. Because overeating calories and overexercising is not great for your long-term health. So they're doing something, they're living, their, their occupational needs or their, or their recreational needs may not be the ideal way to live a long life. Because I don't think exercising six hours a day like I had to do is good for my long-term lifespan. So we have to try to, you know, because it encourages too much food because you have to consume too much food in the process. Yeah, yeah. But some people just have to do it. And I'm... We make, you know, we make higher protein drinks for them. We may give them more hemp seeds, you know, more, um, you know, more Mediterranean pine nuts, more beans in their diet. We have the diet be designed to be high in protein, sunflower seeds. And we sometimes give them a, you know, a natural protein powder, natural food powders that increase the protein with hemp, with hemp seed or hemp seed powder or pea protein. So we give them a lot of, you know, so we try to make it so it, they can do what they want to do in the healthiest way possible the, with the idea of minimizing animal protein. You really don't want to be dependent on animal protein because that's going to really exacerbate the aging of the body much faster. You know, and I think that marketing has done a, a, a great number on our, the way we think about animal. I always say animal products and because they are animal products because there's protein in plants. And so with, with all of that, Dr. Furman, you know, we, we just need to re reformat that, that the nutritarian lifestyle is one that promotes health and wellness. And I want to thank you, Dr. Furman, and everybody who's, I hope you can go and read all the comments because everybody loves what you're doing. And I love what you're doing too. Thank you so much for, you. for just loving us the way you do. Thank you so much. And to you, my viewing friends, once you learn a truth, it's very hard to unlearn it. We're gonna have a little bit of clock um, after the show here, and I'm gonna remind you to get to eat to live. And who will be always here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever.
and are presented to our wider audience solely for general educational purposes. Please act responsibly and consult personally with your own medical, psychological, or nutritional expert before taking any steps to improve your life. Oh, that uh, we've got you, you know, it's already uh, nine o'clock in the morning and I didn't know if there was anything else that you would like to add or because I know that it's a, it's a holiday weekend and I want to thank you for, and, and if, I want to tell you guys that Dr. Furman, uh, we, we had a conflict on our schedule and he came on today so that he can meet uh, us all on the air uh, because that's how committed he is to the show and I, and I am into the lifestyle of nutritarian lifestyle. So I want to thank you again, Dr. Furman. This is very sweet of you. Um, is there anything that you would like to add to people who are watching today that maybe you weren't able to go over uh, and that maybe a question came up and maybe something's come up that you thought, well, maybe I need to add this a little bit, or change this a little bit. Um, not, not anything offhand I can think of. I just, um, you know, it's just all around me. We, we see people getting bad nutritional information. They're getting bombarded with all types of incorrect information. And I, I'm also, I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to try to help write it, but it's a constant fight. It's a, always a constant, there's people just want to promote um, all these crazy ideas. It's like, it's, it's insanity going on. Mm -hmm. Instead of eating mostly vegetables. I mean, what I'm saying right now is we've landed the man on the moon already. We know the cure for cancer. We know, I mean, we know how to, not the cure for, we know how to prevent cancer and have people live long life. The answer is vegetables. You gotta eat a vegetable-based diet. There's no other answer. Yeah, and, and along with that, and this is something that, that I, uh, most people neglect, there's a spirit and a mind connected to our body. And there, there are reasons that the body breaks down. And you know, thoughts, keeping your thoughts healthy and your spirit strong, those are, those are so important. Uh, in, in the research that I've done, Dr. Furman, we have discovered that people who have past traumas you know, that are, are willing, unwilling to look at them or resolve them, and they're just stored in the body, that could also promote disease. And so that it's very important to eat well, and that's, that's true. But that's, we also need, there's a three parts of us. There's a spirit, there's a mind, there's a body. And we need to address all those uh, lovingly. And I, and I think that when we eat a nutritarian lifestyle, we're loving our body. And so we need to have like a nutritarian thought process uh, so that we can love our minds and love our spirit as well. So I, I we, wanna... know, we know that a lot of people have difficulty eating healthfully too because of their um, emotional, you know, because of emotional and psychological reasons. Yeah. That's why, you know, I, that's why when they, people stay with us, they're getting psychological care too, so they can better understand their bad relationship with food. You know, so it's, and why they use, use food the way they do as a, as a drug. People have an illicit love affair with, with self, with poisonous behaviors, whether it's drugs or alcohol or, or food or whatever it is they're doing, but they, they, you know, so they, so people do use food as a crutch and it's very self-destructive and it's, it's very con confusing because they're getting bad information mixed in the same cauldron as their food addictions and their food preferences. So it makes it very difficult. So mostly what we see is it's difficult for people to, to eat, stay, stick with eating healthfully and stay enjoying it for the rest of their life without being tortured by the, being different from others. And it's not hard to do. It becomes easy to do and, and, and fun to do and exciting to do it. And the most rewarding way to live, but we have to, but people need some help to get there sometimes. Yes, and I agree. And I, and I, I just want to encourage all of you to um, not just look at the food you're eating, but what's eating you. What's eating you inside? What are the thoughts that keep running through your brain over and over again? And I do a lot of shows on the emotional and the, the mental, the physical, whatever it is going on to release it, to, to deal with it. And Dr. Furman at his retreat centers also addresses those things. Sometimes it's really hard to address everything in one show, but I, I wanna encourage you to help grow the show, to help spread the word that the, the passion that Dr. Furman has um, dedicated his career and his life is everything. And so help us grow the show, like this, share this. Also, I just wanna say one more time, be the 10th caller texter, 407-373-5959. You can also, the first person who guessed what recipe um, this is, 
that, that I uh, have on my picture will also win a book. So here's the picture again, but it's there. Respond underneath there, and I will let you know what it is. It was delicious, by the way. And, um, and then you can private message me, and the tenth, whoever is the 10th person will win the book. Okay, so uh, we're entering into a holiday, and I hope that all of you are safe and, um, and love yourself through uh, every aspect of your life, whether it's the mind, the spirit, and the body. Dr. Furman, thank you so much. And as always, you are a champion, and I'm glad that we get to learn from you. Thank you. Have okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.